Hello and welcome to our first video lesson on Chapter 18, Nitrogen Metabolism. We'll be looking at the nitrogen cycle. Let's first consider what are the biological molecules that contain nitrogen. This would include all amino acids, all nucleotides, and certain cofactors such as biotin. Nitrogen is one of the most versatile elements. It contains more oxidation states than any other major element. In our table we can see the oxidation state can vary as much as 10, from minus 4 oxidation state to a plus 6. Quite remarkable and more than any other element. Every living organism on planet Earth needs nitrogen. So where can we get this vital element? Well, over three-fourths of the air that we breathe is nitrogen gas. But we do not have the ability to fix or extract the nitrogen from the air and convert it into a form that we can use. For this, we are entirely dependent on prokaryotes. So the nitrogen cycle would not exist without bacteria and archaea. Fixing nitrogen or converting it to a chemical form is absolutely essential for most organisms on planet Earth. It converts it into a more usable chemical form. Now there are non-biological processes that accomplish this, such as lightning strikes, industry, and combustion, but then the chemical form it is converted into is not readily assimilable, and so we need a different process for biological consumption. For this, we rely on microbes that are capable of fixing nitrogen. These microbes are referred to as diazotropes. An azote simply refers to nitrogen, and since this is dinitrogen, it's a diazotrope. Trope just means eater, so these are literally nitrogen eaters. The process is catalyzed by the enzyme nitrogenase. This is a metalloprotein. It has iron sulfur clusters that we've seen in other types of enzymes, but it has a unique iron molybdenum cofactor illustrated at the top of the slide. This enzyme is especially sensitive to oxygen. It oxidizes the iron sulfur cofactors and inactivates the enzyme. Here we have the process of nitrogen fixation. We take one molecule of nitrogen gas. To this we add eight protons, eight electrons in the process uh, in combination with 16 molecules of water. This gives us two molecules of ammonia and one molecule of hydrogen gas. This process, since we are creating order and significantly decreasing entropy, is quite expensive energetically speaking. It costs us 16 molecules of ATP to fix one molecule of nitrogen. Quite an energy hog. And as mentioned, it's the microbes that do this for us. Remember the Calvin cycle? That was also quite expensive to fix carbon because there again we're creating more order and decreasing entropy. I should point out that the two molecules of ammonia that are produced, because the pK is so high, around 9, at physiological pH it readily becomes ammonium ion. Well, where else can we get the ammonia that we need? There are nitrates and nitrites that occur naturally in water and soils, and this is one form of a nitrogen-containing compound. There are certain organisms in the soil that can reduce nitrates and nitrites to form ammonia. This is carried out by plants, fungi, and bacteria. So in our nitrogen cycle illustrated here, nitrate reductases convert nitrate to nitrite, Nitrite can then be further reduced to ammonia. So there are organisms within the soil that can convert these oxidized nitrogen compounds to ammonia. The corollary of that is the process of nitrogen nitrification, illustrated as the outer portion of, the, of our cycle. Nitrification involves the oxidation of ammonia to form nitrite, and then the further oxidation of nitrite to form nitrate. As you can see, the exact opposite of the nitrate and nitrite reductase reactions. 
Some organisms can fully oxidize ammonia to nitrate and some only to nitrite. This serves to replenish nitrates and nitrites in the soil. In other words, there's a balance between these organisms. Some use one form of nitrogen to produce ammonia and others use ammonia to produce nitrates and nitrites. There's always a balance. Now we saw that we used nitrogen fixation to extract nitrogen gas from the air and convert it to ammonia. There's also a process of denitrification where we convert nitrates to nitrogen gas and that completes the cycle. So you'll notice that in order for this cycle to function we need organisms that can contribute each one of these components to the cycle. Remember all living organisms on planet Earth require nitrogen. It's simply the form of nitrogen that might vary. And with this nitrogen cycle, each organism is supplied with the form of nitrogen that it needs. In our next video lesson, we'll see how the nitrogen in the form of ammonia is initially assimilated into biological molecules, and we'll look at the amino acids that are key to this process.